What up? It's your boy Nick Incredible Man. And this is Vinland Saga episode 14 discussion slash review and this episode. You if you've been a fan of my channel for a while now, you know that uh Someone like Asklad, when they do certain things or something like that, I'm okay with it because I I, I love Ein's own girl from Overlord and I'm totally okay with the things that he does and certain characters like him. But then you have a list of characters and I love Asklad, that's the thing. I think he's a wonderful character and I'm super excited about his past, but... Then you come across characters every once in a while, like Griffith from Berserk, and that's who Asklad felt like to me. But this episode, the funny thing is, because I'm so conflicted about my feelings, it's because I liked him this episode, and I hated him this episode because of what he done, but I also liked what he done. and. You got you guys know what I'm talking about when I when I dive into it in a few moments. But this episode was this this episode was different for me, man. Um normally you guys know I'm coming here, I'm super energetic when I'm when I'm talking about Finland Saga because I love it. I love every episode. <sighs> this one was hard, man. Um one of the reasons is because uh the whole Christianity aspect and um you guys know I never go into any of that on my channel. But, um, yeah. I totally understood where the priest was coming from, where the brothers were coming from, what the father was trying to say, and what the girl was feeling about taking the ring in her relationship and take on her faith in Christianity. Because that's all, that's, that's all it is. It, it, it's, it's that faith. And your faith can do wonders, man. But at the same time, it's only human to doubt yourself and question everything that's going on and wonder if it's a bigger part of God's plan. But uh, this episode was, it was so many different emotions for me, man. Um, but let's dive right into it and talk about it. Uh, yeah, man, it picked up. And it started talking. It jumped straight into the episode. And um, where before that, we kind of had like a brief glimpse and flashes of... I'm thinking that was the priest's past. Like where he was before he got to where he is now. Because they still had the hood zone and everything. So I'm thinking that was his past at a, like a monastery or something. And I that'd be cool to, to kind of see how that plays out and where that goes. But it started this episode with the two brothers talking to the priest about what they felt like love was. And from my understanding now, from this episode and last week's episode and the week before that, Vikings don't know what love is. They 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 don't they don't know what that is. And Canute does him and Ragnar and the priest, they know what it is because they're Christians and um even with them with Odin and Thor and everything, they don't know what love is. But from this episode, I don't know if anybody else caught it, but I did. When the two brothers were talking to the priest about their whole, well, I got my brothers back and everything and how they were playing on it. It was like, I wouldn't kill you for money. It depends on how much it is. But how they were going back and forth. Um, and then they started to reminisce about, and the priest told him nothing. He was like, no, that's not what it is. And then they started to reminisce about 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 Thor's or Thor's, take your pick. And for some reason they couldn't remember his name. And I'm pretty sure because it's been a while now. I mean it's been years because at that time I think Asklad, I mean um Thorfinn was like five and he and he's like twelve to thirteen now, so no, fourteen. So that that's that's a big time difference, and I'm pretty sure they could forget Thor's name. So or Thor's. I'm pretty sure they can forget his name. So, I'll give them a pass on that. Um, but they started remem 
reminisce about him and how he defeated their troops, but he never killed a single one. And they told that to the priest, and they was like, "Well, he 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 was he was real weird. We killed him, but he was real weird and was saying other stuff, and he wouldn't take out his sword and fight us." And he said something strange when we were fighting. He said, "A warrior doesn't need a sword. A true warrior doesn't need a sword." And when they said that, the priest's eyes got real huge, and like something clicked and triggered in his mind, and he wanted to know so much more about Thor's and I'm super excited I'm hoping that that kind of connects him and Thorfinn and maybe he can kind of get Thorfinn to let go of his resentment towards Asgard maybe just so he can find inner peace himself not even to where him not wanting to kill Asgard anymore I mean I told you guys I love Asgard but maybe just so he can find his inner peace and let and move on and and screw as that and go back home to his mom and his sister I, I i wish that was the case and i'm hoping that that kind of happens maybe later on in the story that the priest kind of hooks up with that uh with thor's i mean with thorfinn um so after all of that man then we start to see um ask that men traveling and you know it's cold outside like the wagons getting caught up and wrapped up around the snow and everything and he starts to talk to ragnar and ragnar was like well we this is bad luck. We can't, we're not going, we're not doing much. And Asgard was like, well, we can't turn back. And Ragnar suggested that they turn back. And Thor, Asgard was like, no, we're going forward. And then all of a sudden, and he was like, we're Vikings. So us raiding this village is what we do. And then they show a village off in the, in the distance. Now I talked about all of that. So now I could go back and talk about the girl. So we get introduced to this girl and they never said her name, but we get it. Well, I think our dad said her name. I can't remember. But we, we get introduced to this girl. And I'm going to be honest, Villain Saga done it again. I was so amazed by just the sheer definition that they made her fingers because there was it was so cold and her skin wasn't getting proper treatment because it's cold. Like, they showed the wrinkles. They showed her fingernails um, chipping and breaking off. And they showed her fingers red and, and just cold. The detail that they put into her into their fingers was just astonishing, and I don't know if anybody else felt that way, but I felt wonderful just seeing that man. I was like, dude, that is that, that's why I love this show, man. Certain things are so well animated and detailed that is so crazy. Other anime wouldn't think to do what Villain Saga is doing on certain parts where they highlight and animate and 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 add so much definition into certain things that's normally not that. Uh, highlighted in, a, in another anime um so we get introduced to her and we see her fawning over a ring and falling in love with it and spinning spending out her time hiding it in a tree because she don't want to know want her parents to know that she stole a ring and in this whole time she was struggling with her faith and now the funny thing about that is is because her family was pretty much you know they they, they were pretty much set she was the only one struggling with her faith but it's also a nice comparison because we have the Vikings or the Danes traveling with the priests and Prince Canute and Ragnar, which are Christians, trying to wonder and figure out what love is and that whole type of aspect. And I think that's a nice comparison to go along with the story. So then they we get and we cut to them having dinner and they're praying and some of the other siblings was was questioning the father about heaven and hell and 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 that was that was that was nice because kids always going to question stuff like that and i could see her having doubts in her faith because they're so poor they're freezing and they're going through so much turmoil and they just feel like there's no way out and you wonder is God really looking out for you? But that's where your faith comes in. There's so much, man. This episode was so heavy just to me, man. I don't know how anybody else felt, but to me, it was super heavy. And, um, yeah, they're having dinner. And the next thing you know, the girl decides to leave and go out. She goes out to find over her ring, and that's when we find out that she stole it, and she feels like she's a bad girl because she stole the ring. And she was like, I should have went to the market without any money at all anyway. And if she, she was just going through some t turmoil, and she was just questioning everything. But at that time is when Bjorn busts up in these people's house, man, 
and he's just looking at these people. Where are your food at? This is what y'all eating. Y'all eating garbage. This is nothing. Dude, you broke into these people's house and you mad that they ain't got nothing good to feed you to eat? You broke into our house. So he broke into the house, man, and, and some of the other guys came in with him. And then they looked at the food and just tasted it and was like, ugh, and just threw it on the floor. So then at this time, lady, and, and I feel so sad because the mother at this time came over. Don't be wasting food, lady. No, you do not. When someone breaks into your house, you do exactly what they say. Granted, you guys are going to get killed anyway. But when someone breaks into your house, you do exactly what they say, man. And she went over there. Don't be wasting food. And dude, Bjorn backhand her with a closed fist. This dude, spinning backhand, MMA punched her across the room. And she fell and knocked over everything on the other side of the room. Dude, I was so mad, dude. So then we have all of her, the girl's little siblings crying and wondering what's going on. And the husband went to check on his wife. And Bjorn told him in English. Because he didn't know it. He had to get one of the other guys to tell him. Give us all the food or I kill you. Dude, this whole situation changed in that moment. But before that, we also have the priest trying to warn the villagers. But like with the snow, I mean, with the wind blazing so hard and this is and this like, like a miniature blizzard out there. And those houses were kind of far apart. Those people couldn't hear him. And then some of Asgard's men just molly whopped the priest because when we see him later, his eye is closed shut and swollen and red and bruised and everything else. So then Aslan them come and take the food from all of the houses and then they gather all of the people in one spot. And this is when it took a, like a, a hard turn for me, man. And I love Asklad, but this, this, this was next level. But that's the funny thing is because I felt, I felt like it was the wrong thing but at the same time, it was a good thing. And I'm going to explain the reasons why I felt that way. Um, because they gathered the people and um, Ragnar tried to tell him, what well, these are civilians, so you can't do this, Asklad. And he was like, I can and I will. And he even told the priest, you are a part of Prince Canute's you know, little cavalry but um, company, I mean. But if you interfere with us raiding again, I will kill you. So they got the people there and the man is begging Asklad not to take all of their food because they won't survive the winter if he does. Just leave them some and we'll find a way to survive. And Asklad was like, you don't have to worry about that. You're, you're not going to survive this winter. You don't have to worry about surviving this winter or any other winters after that. And I knew at this moment when they gathered them up into a circle, they were going to kill these people. I knew it. I knew it. But at the same time, when it happened, it still was a shock to my system, man. Because when they killed these people, they sat there. And I'm, gl I'm glad that they didn't show it. A lot of times, like when, like when death is happening on Villain Saga, they pretty much show it. Like when people get cut and, and fingers and everything, get heads get cut off, they show it. But I'm super glad that they didn't show it this time. And I'm thinking the only reason is because there was a lot of kids mixed in with the adults. And that's the sad thing that that really got me, man. Is because there were a lot of kids mixed in with the adults. And on the one hand, I'm so upset and, and heartbroken about it happening. But at the same time, I think it was a good thing. Because these people would have died of starvation any other way now now i i'm i believe that god would have provided for these people if they had a chance to live but i don't know man like it was so harsh and destitute out there i don't even see how they would have even gotten any other food but i'm pretty sure god would have provided for them but they just didn't get the chance man so Aslan and everyone they killed these people they dug a ditch and I feel like they chopped some of these people up instead of just actually killing them because they were going to throw them all into one hole it's so sad and the daughter escaped and she was she was so traumatized I know she was traumatized but then she felt like that she was kind of elated a little bit for some reason and the only reason I could grasp is that because she knows that they're in a better place 
now that they're gone and they don't have to struggle and suffer and deal with all of the harsh problems that was happening in their village. And then she passed out in the snow and I'm and that has to be from shock. And then she woke up and that's when this episode ended, man. My heart straight broke when that was happening, man. And the thing is, even even Thorfinn looked shocked that this was happening when 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 um all of this was going on. Prince Canute, we knew he was going to be like that. Canute, the 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 priest, Ragnar and even Thorfinn, I guarantee you didn't like the way that this went down because this 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 was way beyond just simply ravaging a village or anything like that. This was way harsher, man. But this episode was way heavy on me, man. But at the same time, like I said, I enjoy Asklad and I hated him this episode. And I kind of understand why he did what he did. And I was okay with it because these people would have died regardless, but they probably would have died of starvation. And I don't know anybody that died of starvation, but I'm pretty sure that's a horrible way to go instead of a quick and painless, well, not painless, but a quick and easy death. And I just felt so bad for that village, man, that they had to come across Asklad. Yeah. But this is my discussion, and, and I, that's that's pretty much that what happened. And I just had to let you guys know that I felt some type of way about this episode. and But I understood why Asklad did what he did. Because he freed those people, but at the same time, you caused the problem that you had to free them from. So... This is your boy, The Incredible Man. Don't forget to smash that like button so you can't smash it anymore. Comment down below and I'll be sure to respond to each and every one of them. And subscribe, but only if you really want to, man. And remember that anime matters, anime is greatness, and anime is life, man. Peace out.